What's going on YouTube? My name's Alex and this is Ask the Cheese Gaming. I'm back with a new review for you today and oh boy am I about to kick the hornet's nest for this one. It's Mortal Kombat 11. MK11 is the latest installment in the Mortal Kombat franchise and was developed by NetherRealm Studios and published by WB Games. This game was released for the PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4 on April April 23rd of 2019. It later was also ported to the Switch. To keep this video on the shorter side and not have like a 15 to 30 minute review, I'm going to briefly go over the good, the neutral, and then the bad. First off, in regards to what I believe is good in this game, the graphics. They are absolutely phenomenal. The characters, the levels, the backgrounds, all look crisp and new. The details on the character sprites is just amazing. Furthermore, NRS took the gore effects of the fatalities and brutalities in Mortal Kombat 11 to an entirely new, new level that we've never seen before. This game is bloodier than it's ever been. Next, the sound design. I have no complaints here. It's solid throughout. You really feel the impact with the punches, kicks, and special moves, and the fatalities when you perform them. The last part, the tutorial. This for tutorial in MK11 is just absolutely phenomenal. It really does a great job of breaking down the game piece by piece and teaching you the basic mechanics to higher levels, to basic combos, and more advanced combos. A neat feature in regards to the tutorial is that it even has individual character tutorials so that you can kind of get a feel for which character you might like or dislike. Moving right along to the neutral, and speaking of characters, the roster. I like some of the choices that NetherRealm Studios made, and then some of the other choices in this game just totally leave me scratching my head. For example, Gyrus and Kronika. I don't fathom why these two characters are in the game. It's nice to see fan favorite characters like Jade, Cabal, and Baraka return, but then other characters that fans have been asking for for forever, say like Smoke, or the ninja characters whose sprites are in the game, Sector and Cyrex, still aren't in the game, so I don't fathom it. Moving right along, the Towers of Time. The concept for the Towers of Time is really good, but the problem and issue is that the rewards you get for completing the towers is just so small. And this game makes you grind a ton for just any kind of gear or skin or anything else that you want to get. And it just be feels like a giant time suck. The Crypt is in a similar vein. It's an entirely new island that you get to explore i.e. Shang Tsung's Island Ruin. But the problem is you need so much currency, which is souls, hearts, and coins, to open the chests. So you have to go and grind and grind and grind more in the Towers of Time in order to get or try to get gear and the crypt that you want. The issue with this is that there's really only four skins for any particular character. The rest is just color swaps. Or, if you like, you could try to get skins on Combat League. Which brings me to my first negative area of the game. The player base in Combat League just feels toxic far too often. On top of that, when you actually do manage to get a match, because unfortunately a lot of the low times take way too long, there's no guarantee that the opponent you'll be facing will manage to have a good connection. So, if their connection's terrible, then you can completely get cheesed out of a good match after having waited so long, and then end up losing the match just because, as I just said, their connection's absolutely terrible. On top of all of that, you have to play pretty much almost daily or every couple days because otherwise your rank and your experience will just completely disappear. 
Moving right along, I want to talk briefly about the story. It's absolute trash. Next. Now, let's take a look at the core gameplay of this game. Holy monkey fucking shitballs. What is going on? Oh my god, Mortal Kombat 11 has so many core gameplay issues. Jesus Christ. First off, this game has hitbox and hurtbox issues that have existed since launch. Let me repeat that. Mortal Kombat 11 has had hitbox and hurtbox issues that have existed since launch. For example, some of Johnny Cage's special moves or mid combo string starters can completely whiff on the female character sprites. I then, the breakaway. Whose brain dead idea in NRS was this? So you're gonna tell me that I can out footsie my opponent, put them into a combo, pop them up, try to continue the combo, and then they can perform a breakaway, and in the process, manage to get a full whiff combo punish against me, even though I out footsie them and out combo them. The breakaway mechanic is just flawed and terrible. In fact, for that matter, the whole entire meter system in this game is just awful. It just leaves me scratching my head. Speaking of meters, the fatal blow, that is literally a get out of free jail card. Excuse me, get out of free jail card. It's just absolute trash and requires no skill whatsoever for an easy free 30% damage. And oftentimes can win you the match just because you got to it and then managed to poke or whatever your opponent. It's, it's just terrible. Let's continue on. That's not even the worst part of this game, to be honest, and we'll get to that in just a second. What makes things even worse about the online connection and the core gameplay or the Towers of Time and everything else in this game, you need to be able to be connected to the internet. Because if you're not connected to the internet for Mortal Kombat 11, you can't play. So if your internet cops out, or your internet's a little bit shoddy for the day, sorry, you don't get to play. But, dear viewer, and if you've stayed with me so far, thank you very much. The worst part of Mortal Kombat 11 has to be by far the developer's treatment of the Mortal Kombat fans in this game. It's just sad. It just hurts my heart. For example, Aftermath, which we received about five months ago, was an overpriced DLC. We just now got a Combat Pack 2 announcement. During that time from Aftermath until now, we received nothing but absolute silence with the exception of Ed Boon trolling fans on Twitter. On top of all of this, in Mortal Kombat 11, and if you like, please go check my video out on this exact subject, NRS decided that they wanted to shove their own political identity politics agenda in this game. Just why? Leave the politics and agenda out of the fighting game. I play video games to escape all that, not have it shoved down my throat. So, overall, is Mortal Kombat 11 worth getting and playing? No. I could list five fighters easily off the top of my head that are far and away better to play. In fact, maybe I'll even pin a comment down below and give you five fighting games that I recommend that you should play over Mortal Kombat 11. You've made it this far. Thank you again so much for watching. And hey, if you agree, then please leave me a like, comment, and a share. And if you disagree, well, thanks for listening. And I'll see you guys all in the next review. And stay safe, everybody. Thanks. Bye.